Being in the gaming industry means being a part of something that is young, dynamic, and ever-evolving. So if we think back just a couple of generations ago, in the early 70s, we had our very first popular, successful game with Pong. Uh, those, those were in the good old days of arcades, and from arcades we moved to consoles in the home, then we moved to PCs, and now, just a mere 20, 30 years later, we've got gaming with us all the time on our mobile devices, and we're not done yet because we're still evolving into AR and VR, and we'll continue to see the game industry evolve from here. Oftentimes people will say, well, I'm not a gamer. And what they have in mind is sort of this stereotype of young men who play a certain type of game. But really what the data shows and what we know from the, the games that we make, somewhere around 48% of all casual mobile gamers are older females. People play our games for many, many reasons. Um, we, we see in our reviews, we hear from a lot of them, they come to wind down after a long day. And of course, you know, to, to escape, to get a moment of peace, a moment of quiet. Uh, they come for a daily challenge, you know, for something that they can keep their mind sharp, that they can start their daily routine with. And then I, I wanna share it. Like that's a, it's an inherent human desire to connect. We enable that in our games. We allow, you can come on the Facebook channels, you can share from the game to be able to bring those people together in this sense of community. So we have a lot of games. We've got more than 32 that are currently available. When we look at our games, they're tried and true games for the most part. Things like Solitaire, Spades, Sudoku, Mahjong. This can lead to a question of, well, how do you improve those games? We look at the players. That's the first thing we wanna look at and try to understand why is a player playing a game? What is their motivation? So some people come in to relax, some come in actually to do the opposite. They might come in to compete. We're really trying to provide an experience for every type of player. We can give you verses, so you can play competitive and you think Solitaire is single player. Well, you can give you first verses so that you can beat the other players and then have that sense of, hey, I played Solitaire the way I want to play it. You have essentially four billion people in the world with smartphones. That's half the world's population. Of that, about 3.2 billion people in the world play games. As a psychologist, one of the things that I think is most important when you're playing games is understanding that the more fun you're having, the more cognitive and well-being benefits that you're going to get. There's a study in Australia, 10,000 people over the age of 70. Uh, that group was 11% less likely, the group that played games, to have dementia than the groups that didn't. So the data is very real, and it's not just this study, there's hundreds of them that are similar. As gaming continues to advance, wherever it does in the future, we will be there developing games for it. Humans tell stories and they play games. That's what we do. It's how we connect, it's how we learn, it's how we grow. We're touching a very human condition uh, when we engage in this gaming and this social aspects. We have these powerful supercomputers in our pockets with us every hour of every day now. It just makes sense for us to be able to be there developing, connecting, bringing joy to people through those games.